The only thing that stands between you and a glass of wine is the next 45 minutes, so let's have some fun, although by the looks of you, it might be your fifth glass of wine. It looks like a few people have maybe already started. Um, who out here has siblings? Okay. And who, for the most part, loves them, but who still kind of bickers sometimes or gets a little snarky? All right, well, I don't know what version of the Brotherhood we're going to get this morning, but we're probably going to have some of that, so it should be fun, right? It makes it more interesting. Most of us really got to know Brian and Michael Voltaggio when we watched them on Top Chef competing in the same season. Yeah. And then they went their separate ways. Each started to build their own really successful restaurant empires, Michael in LA, Brian in Maryland. And, and now it's very exciting because they've joined forces to open Voltaggio Brothers Steakhouse at the MGM National Harbor in Maryland. They talked to us about the project earlier this year for an issue of Food & Wine and shared some amazing recipes with us, which are on foodandwine.com. They're going to share some more recipes today, probably in between some trash talking and maybe a couple of slap fights. So um, please help me welcome Brian and Michael Voltaggio. What is that? Brian has his own theme music. Is this mine? That's how I knew Brian was famous. He shows up and brings his own theme music when he walks onto a stage. Um, our demo today, hi, Aspen Food and Wine. Uh, wow. This is the first time Brian and I have actually done this festival together on a stage here in Aspen Food and Wine. So thank you guys for not being fast enough to get a ticket to Andrew or Gail's demo and having to get this ticket. Uh, we appreciate that. Next time, buy them a little earlier. Uh, our demo is called High Stakes. I know what you're thinking. Uh, it's not that. So there isn't going to be any cannabis butter on top of the steaks or anything like that today. Um, we're merely referring to the fact that we are high up in the mountains. We are cooking steak and uh, we have a steakhouse inside of a casino. Um, our property, when we were approached by MGM, they said, look, we uh, want to build a steakhouse with you guys. We said, great. How's that going to be different than any other steakhouse that's in any other hotel or any other casino or in any other freestanding restaurant for that matter? And they were like, well, that's up to you guys. And we said, okay, we're brothers. We're building a steakhouse. We'd like to separate those two words and build a steakhouse. So we actually constructed a house in the middle of an MGM hotel with a living room, a dining room, a kitchen. And that part was cool. When somebody's like, here's a whole bunch of money, build your dream restaurant. And by the way, you can do it with your brother. You get something really cool. But then our job was to then create the food for that. And so how do you take traditional steakhouse fare and make that interesting or change it up a bit or not mess it up too much because people love going into steakhouses because they get steak, vegetables, potatoes, dessert, and all sorts of stuff all over the table that you probably should be high when you eat it, but uh, I assure you we're not that today. Um, what we're gonna try and do is we have 45 minutes. I just talked for about five of those. Is he, he's doing work, okay, good. We'd okay. like to try and show you an entire meal in the next 45 minutes, how we'd present it at the steakhouse. Um, so we're gonna show you two cold starters. We're gonna show you a steak, obviously, if Brian gets it cooked in time. We've got now 30 minutes. Uh, we're gonna show you dessert. We do that too. I don't know if you know that chefs are also pastry chefs sometimes as well, so we taught ourselves how to do pastry because pastry chefs are getting really expensive these days. I don't know if you guys know a guy named Johnny Uzzini, but his, he's like, you can't even touch him. He's like uh, LeBron James now. You can't get guys like Johnny Uzzini. So then we have to learn how to do dessert, and it's a whole, I gotta text Johnny, and can you send me some recipes, and blah, blah, blah. Um, so don't get his new cookbook, because our cookbooks have desserts in them as well. So if you see Johnny, I didn't say that. Brian, what are you, you're so okay. quiet today. So, uh, well, I was letting you get all that out of the way. So a lot of people, um, you know, if it's raining outside, for example, right? How do you cook a, a really great steak inside? Um, and when we also Or if you're cook... in a tent where you're not allowed to right. have a grill or an open flame and you have to do a steak demo. Tell <laughs> so, me the truth. <laughs> yes, Tell exactly. me the truth. So at steak MGM University. National Harbor, where we, where we cook steak together, we cook over wood. We cook over live fire. Uh, we make our own charcoal. We, we actually feed our fire with that um, using some really great local wood. So what we're doing here, though, is, is the rainy day steak demonstration, right? So we're going to pretend like it's raining outside. We can't fire up that grill. Um, I like to use a cast iron. We like to use a cast iron pan. Uh, we also like to use really you know, large cuts of steak. This is a, a ribeye. It's about 22 ounces. I pre-salted it you know, and let it sit in the refrigerator because it does two things. One, it helps dry out the outside of the steak a little bit. Two, it starts to pre-season that meat because it's a big, thick cut of steak. 
and just finishing it with salt afterwards doesn't always permeate all the way through the meat. Really high heat in the uh, cast iron pan. What we're going to do is we're going to cook it here both sides until it browns. Uh, I preheated an oven at 250 degrees. Is this for me? Sorry, we're going to have an you. intimate moment for a second. Is this my cocktail sauce? Wow, no. Wait, are we mic'd? That is not your cocktail oh. sauce. This is. Did you guys see that? <laughs> Crap. Okay. I mean, we're doing a demo in front of people. We can't. We okay. got to act like we're not doing. So, okay. um, so we're searing the steaks, and then they're going to go into an oven, like I said. Um, typically, like, what, what I like to do is to make sure you get a perfect temperature is I set a thermometer at 127 degrees. You know, one of those thermometers that tells you when it's done. Um, and it's a probe, but when it goes in the oven, don't get one of those plastic ones that melts because it'll make your steak taste bad, right? Put, put the thermometer in the steak and let it go until it beeps. Then it's going to come out and you're going to let it rest for What does that minutes. beep sound like? Beep. No, no, but like show them beep, when beep, it goes beep. off. Give us a little, give us like a, some beeping. Beep, beep, beep. I don't know. I mean, okay. I, it was, it, it's what it does. So, um, so that's what we're going to do. So that's the whole thing in a nutshell. So we're going to be cooking that, but we have a lot of other things Is we that accomplish hot? to get to that table. No. Uh-oh. Okay. It's getting there. So I was going to make the shrimp cocktail first, but because we have 45 no, minutes. We will be able to. I'll continue making the shrimp cocktail. Yes. Uh, this is shrimp. It's pretty cocktail -y. Shrimp cocktail. We're not allowed to feed you guys, so we're going to eat most of the food that we cooked today. Um, we lightly poached it in salted water. A lot of shrimp cocktails, over season stuff like that. We basically pot of water. The ocean's like, I don't know, 10% salt inside of it. So we put 10% salt into boiling water. We put the shrimp into it for one minute. We take it out. We put it onto a piece of parchment paper. We put it into the refrigerator. Why? Because the shrimp tastes like shrimp from the ocean, which is cooked in salt water and swims in salt water and all that sort of... You got that part of it. But then we're like, how do we take this shrimp cocktail and make it a little bit more interesting? This is high stakes. This is Brian and Michael Voltaggio doing shrimp cocktail. So... Is that third person? Did I just talk about us? And I think what you if, you, if you're doing it for two people? It's still third person, right? I need help here. I'm a cook. I work in the food service industry. Okay. Whatever person that is, I'm talking in that. So we started uh, thinking about different flavors that we liked, and we started with the cocktail sauce. And cocktail sauce um, is one of my favorite things. Shrimp cocktail is one of my favorite things. How do you not, as we say in the kitchen, F that up? Um, you guys know what F means? What? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't say it. Don't say it. They won't invite us back. It's taken what, how many years? We've been cooking for 20 years. 20 years, yeah. Yeah, they won't invite Something us back like if that. we say the F word. Uh, We're going to get fired. Fired. Uh, no, don't say that word. So this is a daikon that we uh, basically lacto fermentation is a popular thing. People are saying a lot of that these days. What does that mean? To us, it means uh, to take about 2% total weight in salt, mix it with shaved thin raw vegetables, put it in a Ziploc bag, and throw it in your pantry for two days, and then open it up, and you've got this delicious pickle. So that's probably the easiest recipe you're going to get this entire week. You can do it with turnips. You can do it with shaved cabbage. Uh, if you want to make your own quick sauerkraut, there's a good way to do that. Shave a whole bunch of cabbage, weigh it, 2% of the total weight, mix it with salt, leave it in the pantry for two days, Bring it back out, cook it, sauerkraut, you've got all that good stuff. We did the same thing here with the daikon. So back to the cocktail sauce. Have you ever had banana ketchup? Anyone? Southeast Asian cuisine, very popular sauce. Well, it is that. And basically um, what we did was we wanted our cocktail sauce to have a little bit of viscosity to it, some thickness, so that when you dip the shrimp into it, it stuck to it. Banana has all that natural starch, all that natural pectin. So what we did was, you can basically take the bananas in their skin, don't do anything to them, microwave them. I know that's a word, the M word, you're not supposed to say it, but this works really well. It's almost like cooking sous vide, but you're using the banana skin as the vacuum bag, and then the microwave as the heat. Put them in there for like a minute or two until they get completely soft, and then blend that into your cocktail sauce. And it gives it this nice texture, but it also gives it this like creaminess so when you put the shrimp into it, it doesn't taste banana-y, but it thickens the sauce without having to add some sort of additive, like, I don't know. I'm just an additive. Stuff that you thicken cocktail sauce with. <laughs> so yes. how, many, how much time do we have left? How many dishes did we say we'd show you? A lot. 36 minutes left, okay. 
We haven't shown you a single dish yet, so this is probably going to be a disaster. I'm forewarning you. Does anyone have any questions so far? Good, because we're going to move right along. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, You're so quiet gonna, today. Oh, I, I am quiet. Also, he's a little hungover. Talk. Sorry. You're, it's the sunglasses. You're, you can tell he's super hungover right now. I don't have any sunglasses on. Um, so, oops. Cats out of the bag. Hey, I fried I fried some shrimp uh, chips over here though. So they're they're seasoned with some Old Bay, you know, because we're from Maryland. We put Old Bay on everything. Um, so in the pan right now, I flipped the steaks. I would have liked a little bit more char on that. I thought I had that thing hot, but for some reason the cast iron's not getting hot as I would want. But uh, what I did was I added some butter. We're gonna bring you know out what Ming brown. said right before he walked out? He's he like, sabotaged don't us. use the stove on the left because I sabotaged you. But what he said was I, voltage, he mixed Sabo voltaggio and sabotage together somehow, and that's what he said. And then he started laughing and walked out of the back. or something like that. Yeah, so, so I think that that might have happened. But it's okay, I'll How recover. cool is it though? No, but seriously. We've been looking at this picture in the middle of the food. Uh, do you guys all know the picture, the picture that gets taken on top of the mountain? We got to be in that picture last night, okay? So, I know, right? That's pretty cool. But we used to look at that magazine and see guys like Ming and see guys like Chef Danielle and see guys like Scott Conant and all these amazing chefs that have come through here to get their picture taken up there on top of the mountain. That's pretty cool, right? So, we got to do that. And then today, we got sabotaged by Ming Tsai, who's been in that picture every single year for like, because clearly, he did that to you. Yes, it's okay though. I will recover. But I mean, like, that's pretty neat, right? You grow up, you're staring, like, you're seeing your heroes in this magazine that you dream about being a part of or being associated with one day. And then all of a sudden, one of the, like, stars of that picture Fs up your stove. There's that F word again. So, are we, do we have anything ready to plate yet? Have we uh, shown we you guys will. one dish yet? No, we right? We will have shrimp cocktail. Okay, so at this point right now, we're going to put the uh, steaks into the oven at 250, like we talked about. We're going to let them continue to cook. Uh, let me get that for you. Thank you. See, it is important to work with uh, somebody Well, else you're not going to be here. happy. Oh, wait, it's at 250. Yeah, it's at 250. Okay. So Ming didn't get to the oven. He only got to the stove. Okay. What are you going to make next? Uh, see next What's this? You're putting stuff in the pot and you didn't tell them what you're doing. I know because I was getting Dude, it look ready. Look at how many people are staring at us right I now. I know. Okay, you can see the stove, right? So a couple of things we have going on here. This is going to be uh, one of our side dishes. So at the steakhouse, um, we, both Michael and I, when we were growing up, we loved oatmeal. Um, we liked a really sweet side mm. of the oatmeal. You know, brown sugar, cinnamon. I hated oatmeal. oatmeal. Now you just lie to you all eat those people. It. You're lying to everyone in this okay, room right now. I did, okay? So we'll just leave him out of this conversation. I like oatmeal right? now. I liked oatmeal. So I liked it really sweet. And so when you, when you grow up, obviously your palate changes. You become, you, you, you know, yearn for something really savory. So we came up with this umami cereal. So basically what this is is a very rich umami cereal made with steel-cut oats. Um, and how we do that is we make so, a hold mushroom on one stock. Second. You remember when Brian lied to you about me liking oatmeal as a kid? He just lied to you? Remember the truth that I told you about how cool the texture of the cocktail sauce would get if you blend a banana into it? Can you see this? See how like the water's not like leaching out all over the place and stuff like that? I think, I mean, I know I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to food, but when you can do something like that without putting a bunch of ingredients into it that you can't pronounce and you just take like Mother Nature's thickening agent, which is a banana in this case, sometimes just thinking a little bit, you guys don't believe, you act like you're looking at me like I'm not making any sense right now. I mean, this is how we do it in the kitchen, look. Chefs always, this is disgusting. I'm going to show you guys a secret right now that's going to make you sick. By the way, I never do this, ever. But, but, some chefs, when they're tasting food in their kitchen, are constantly putting this and going like that. And that's disgusting, so. But, it's better than them... See, it's not like eating, uh, what's something that bananas are in? It's not like eating banana bread, right? It's not like eating a banana. Can you... Okay, it? but it sweetens it up a little bit, right? Ticket. Very good. You get the whole plate. Why do I have to do all the talking? Uh, because you're doing a good job. But now I'm doing the work, too. I'm working, chef. So I'm gonna start. I'm starting the uh, the next dish. So what next dish? What's the next dish? Wedge salad. The wedge salad. Yes. 
This demo it's is called really High Sticks. You're going to make a wedge salad? The steaks are cooking, chef. So um, we, we can't have anybody participate in tasting, can we? All right, so we'll just make one. I know, we wanted to. So while well, Brian's making an iceberg salad for you guys, cool. Um, oh, don't yeah. worry. You guys came it's all the way out get. here to listen to us talk for 45 minutes and watch It'll him make get, a salad. It'll get Let's hear for worry. Brian's making a salad. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. It'll, Tossing it'll, salad in front of all these people. Okay. It'll, it'll, um, it'll get good, don't worry. What is this, olive oil? You know what? I don't want to hear from you, okay? You said you were going to help us. By the way, this is Chef Chris Constantino. You know what he said this morning? Hey, you guys need any help? You didn't say help, you said heckle. Oh, do you guys need a heckler, not a helper? Thank you, Chef. By the way, another one of my childhood heroes, clearly I just aged him, because I grew up reading about him too, and now we're actually friends, which is really weird for me. Childhood, yes, he just made you sound older. <laughs> All right. So oh, just now, you... oh, there he is. Wait a minute, childhood? All right. Yes, Chef. Okay, Sorry, so chef. To, keep, to keep things rolling, you know, you came here to actually see what we're cooking, <laughs> not these two chasing each other around. Um, so what I have here is, uh, is ranch dressing, because everybody loves ranch dressing, except where we come from in the Chesapeake region, we put Old Bay in it, because Old Bay ranch is delicious. And have so you guys ever put base. Old Bay in your ranch dressing? Yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. So, back to shrimp cocktail. We mentioned this uh, Southeast Asian thing we talked about, right? The banana ketchup. The banana cocktail sauce that we've just introduced to you. We've got uh, some Thai basil. Thank you, chef. Wow. That's an honor. It's, it's... Brian made it. I'm just kidding. I made it. Um... So just some Thai basil. This is the, the daikon that we, who, who remembers how to make the daikon? How much? Salt. What do you do with it? Shave the vegetable on the mandolin, put it in a Ziploc bag, 2% salt, throw it in your pantry till it smells like a fart, and then take it out. Why does that word make everyone laugh? That's the F word that I was talking about earlier, by the way. If, it, if you guys were thinking of something else, then... Shame on you. Shame on you. So, again... Steakhouse food is food that's very familiar to a lot of people. Uh, like the casino told us, or like MGM told us when we, when we did the deal, and when Food & Wine presented us with the opportunity to do a demo, they're like, it's a steakhouse, don't F it up, so don't, uh, you know what F, F means? Word. You guys? Oh yeah, why don't you guys take some selfies, cool. Uh, if you go to these amazing, uh, does everyone have a, like a Korea town near where they live? Maybe a Thai town? A market? Does anyone have the internet? <laughs> okay. Well, if you go on said internet and you Google shrimp crackers or crab crackers, they send you these cool little wafers. We make a lot of this stuff ourselves in the restaurants, but to show up here and show you guys a bunch of things that will take, if it says prep time four days, you probably won't be that interested in it and we'd rather you just come to our restaurant anyway. But we look for other ways to present the same things the same way. So you can buy these little shrimp crackers that, and then fry them fresh, which we just did. They come shaved, dehydrated, you get a pot of oil, you throw them in, you fry them, and they puff out like these little shrimp pompadons, right? Well, sometimes people serve, uh, what, saltine crackers with shrimp cocktail? Why not serve shrimp crackers with shrimp cocktail? So that's what we're doing today. So this is more or less how we present our shrimp cocktail at the Voltaggio, Bro it sounds like an Italian restaurant, Voltaggio Brothers Steakhouse. And um, it's in Maryland, right? Where you live? Yes, okay. yes. Oxon Hill, Maryland. Ryan National lives in Harvard. Maryland. Hey, I'm from there too. Every time we're out, people are like, uh, hey, where are you guys from? And Brian's like, he's from LA, I'm from Maryland. I'm like, Which one are you using for blue cheese? What's that? Blue cheese. This one? Are you, you're talking to me. You realize like, yes, you're Yes, I know. Right? We have a demo. Which, which bowl are we using for blue cheese? Anybody know? Sorry, we're using this one. We're not allowed to okay. serve the food to you guys, by the way. We wanted to have a table up here and, like, serve people, but we, uh, we're not allowed to serve food here, so. Um, shrimp are a little bit overcooked, but Brian did it. I did. Sorry. You'll get <laughs> the blame, idea. You need I to dip it in the cocktail the sauce, though. You got to... Is it okay? Did you get some cocktail sauce? 
Talk with your mouth full. It's fine. How is it? You need a microphone? He went like this. So I think it, like, like this. oh, perfect. Okay. So for those of you that just have to listen to me talk, he said perfect. Um, I'm going to take his word for it. So show off, right? We will need more. More nitro? Yeah, we will. Oh, now we're empty. Yeah, Uh-oh. We're going to need more. Uh, this is how we make crumbled blue cheese. You guys have had a wedge hey. salad before? Hey, hey. Wedge salad always has crumbled blue cheese, right? But, no. Well, <laughs> since you all decided to come to Aspen, Colorado in the summertime, I don't know if you noticed, this is a winter resort, uh, there isn't any snow here. So what we've decided to do is take your mountain wedge that Brian built over here, because it kind of looks like a mountain, I think. What do you think? Mountainy? Could you guys even see that, or are you just looking at yourselves? You guys are so vain. Oh my gosh, who comes and go. sits in a room and looks at themselves in this angled mirror for 45 minutes? Can you see the dish, though? That's the that important bacon, part. Chef. Okay. These are bacon bits, and again, I love that you're taking notes because, sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass you. Can we have, I mean, give her a round of applause. She's the only one taking notes. You guys are just trying to hold down whatever you ate or drank last night in this hot, tented room right here, so. Um, bacon bits, right? I used to go on the salad bars when I was a little kid because he always does that when I'm talking. That's cool. Get it? <laughs> cool. All right. Um, bacon bits. Do you know how to make these? Does anyone really know how to make these? Do you guys want to know how to make these? All right, I'll tell you. You go to the store and you buy these things called bacon bits. No, I'm just kidding. You take uh, chunks of bacon, freeze it a little bit, right? Put it through a meat grinder, grind the bacon, and then just put it into a pan and slowly render it. I know. Duh, right? The first time I did that, I'm like at work grinding it for pate or something, and I just threw it into a pan, and I'm like, huh, bacon bits. I don't have to go to Ruby Tuesdays anymore. Um, Jeez. <laughs> what? Nothing. All right, so uh, did what you we say did is we, shit? No, I did not. So what we did is we took the blue cheese, uh, you know, froze it with nitrogen, threw it into this uh, neat KitchenAid blender, and what it did is it pulverized it into our uh, new summertime Aspen snow made with blue cheese, right? So we're going to sprinkle that over the top. Now we have a snowy mountain in Colorado. Now you guys came to a ski resort at the right time. More? More. I, blizzard, yeah. It's blizzard, be like, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, love, they clap when we do this. Look, watch. Look. <laughs> all right, all right Look. it's enough. It's enough, it's enough. Oh, we've got the bacon bits. <laughs> uh, yes, add more bacon. And again, and again, um, when you're challenged with like, hey, how do you take a steakhouse classic like a wedge salad, blue cheese, tomato, bacon, iceberg lettuce? Are you gonna? We're I not mean, allowed to do that. Shh. We're not allowed to serve you that, sir. <laughs> but no, sir. Put the fork down. <laughs> Uh, security, we have a gentleman in the front row that is not complying with uh, Aspen Food and Wine rules right now. Can we get security? Security, that gentleman right there, please. <laughs> All right. How Breaking is it? the law. All not right. bad, right? Where are we so, at? So How long I mean, on a steak? I'm sorry? Steak? It's just about done. Are you sure? Yeah, They're going to eat it. I this isn't a demo like normal where they just make food that is fake and probably cheated the recipe a little bit, and then it's not really edible, and then you guys sat in here and watched it. No, I'm just kidding, no one does that. Um, it's called made-for-TV food. Have you guys, no, you wouldn't, okay. All right, can you shut that? That's what Brian's doing with the steaks right now. Brian, we have to cook for real. We're gonna let these rest. What's that? We're cooking for real. You gotta let them rest. Are they tired? Yes, they're tired. What does that mean? They stayed out late last night. Oh. Do you have one of those racks for me? I wanna rest. Let me know when the steak is finished resting and I'll... It's just about done. <laughs> All right. Here, I'm going to send this off stage, okay? God, that's so good. I want to be a steak <laughs> Sorry, so bad hot. right now. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, meanwhile, while Michael's resting, and I guess apparently the stakes, we're going I don't need to, rest. Uh, I can just... We're going to grill some asparagus. I'm all over it. I mean... Oh, here we go. <laughs> so what we've done here is we've just simply peeled Blanche some asparagus. How much time do we have left? Probably not a lot. 21? Man, we're doing a pretty good job. We are. How's the wedge salad? Does it need more, it needs more dressing, right? Are you just you're rubbing it in the bottom and getting the ranch dressing? Yeah. Okay. Food comes with instructions now, too. The chef recommends that you eat it like this. What do you guys normally think when they say that to you? Well, the chef recommends that you season I'm gonna your eat asparagus. It. You know what? So. I bought this. I'm going to eat it any way I want. Say that next time. Be like, nah. All right. Thank you. Uh, I made that part. Oh, that one's not even on. Okay, so we're going to let that get hot. What's in the pot? We're going to talk about that next because uh, this needs to get hot. So, what, okay, going back to the mushroom oatmeal, or umami cereal. We made a stock using uh, dried shiitakes, fresh shiitakes, uh, some kombu, and uh, a little bit of soy sauce. And it makes a really rich umami stock. And that's what we started the oats with. So we cooked these uh, with 250 grams of the oats and about 1,000 grams of the, if What's, you're taking notes, 1,000 grams of English? stock. I don't know what that means because I use scale. Convert it. I don't know. I can't convert it in my head. I'm not that smart. All right. So, so basically, um, what if you say this? Look at the container of oats that you have. Four. No, no. Like, take the can of oats. Right. Look at it. Whatever the liquid is on the can, instead we're going to use what? Mushroom stock. Wow. Okay. Grams. Psh, leave that for the weed dispensaries, okay? <laughs> okay. We're, so, it's high stakes. So we made this really great porridge. In here, what we have is um, same mushroom stock, uh, some yeast and some butter. And we're making this emulsion that we're going to buzz, and we're going to put this around this umami cereal as we plate it. We're also going to uh, roast some Hen of the Woods mushrooms, which is... How are you going to do that, Chef? In this you know what? I'm not saying a word for the rest of this demo. In this one cast iron pan that we have that's hot. Um, so this umami cereal, again, going back to... You know, talking about childhood and all of that stuff, something really sweet. This you is ate be... umami cereal when you were a kid? No. I made very sweet cereal. Oh, you ate oatmeal. We made oatmeal. Which I loved, apparently. You did. You just don't remember. I love oatmeal now. This is actually Brian's recipe. Uh, and I will say that I was not a fan of oatmeal. Until you had this. This is where I'm going to compliment my brother. And you guys are going to go, aww. Wait, I didn't say it yet. I didn't like oatmeal until my older brother made an umami cereal, and now it's my favorite oatmeal ever because my brother made it. Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> what else is in the pot? Uh, okay, so what else is in the pot? Here, do you want to try some? You here? You do this. Look, I almost doing? know what you're gonna do before you're gonna, and then you can use your hands to cook the mushrooms. Oh, okay. What? Okay, never mind. Here, I can do it. Yeah, that's why fine. it's better. There's two of us because we can be in we our restaurants. We can accomplish more things at, at one time. Yeah. So he's just roasting these in oil right now. He's going to put some butter in there probably if he can find it. Yes. Do we have butter? Do yeah, you guys like here. butter? We have butter. We have butter. We have Crush garlic. Crush some garlic. Have throw some thyme in there. Put some butter in there. And so we're focusing on the side dishes now. We showed you sort of a shrimp cocktail riff. Uh, uh, a, a wedge salad riff, you know, dishes that are reimagined for the steakhouse. And again, we're not like doing techniques for the sake of using techniques and so forth. It's like, how can we take this dish that everyone's familiar with and just, I'm not even saying elevate it because I love a wedge salad smothered in dressing with bacon bits and tomatoes and stuff all over it. But I feel like people of your stature wow, expect man. a little bit more when they go out to our restaurants now because you guys can do most of this at home. Because of the internet. Did you Thanks. Unwrap that? Internet. Um, somebody the other night, I gave a piece of our short rib from the restaurant to. It was vacuum packed in a bag. And I said, uh, he loves our short rib. And he goes, okay, what do I do when I get home with it? And I'm like, just heat up a pot of water like this, set the bag into it, re -therm it, take it out of the bag, and sear it, knead it. And he goes, why can't I just use my immersion circulator? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. How many people in this room have one of those? See? Yeah. A couple of you. That looks pretty good, Brian. We're getting there. So as the mushrooms are roasting, uh, in here, again, that sauce that we have, I'm just going to use an immersion blender to start to emulsify and bring it back together. Are you sure those are okay? I think they're fine. You think? 
I think so. We might have to sear them a little bit more. Yeah, we will. Our restaurant in Maryland, the one that we, our, our house, sorry, it's a house. Um, <laughs> it's fun when you can just imagine things and see them come to life, but we wanted to be able to make charcoal for the grills that we were cooking everything into, so we built an entire wall of hearts on the back. People spend, you know, a lot of their careers trying to one day get a pizza oven. We have three of them in the back of the steakhouse just to burn wood to make charcoal so we can shovel it into the grill, and it's this whole live fire mess thing that we've created. So uh, the first night we were there, do you guys know what hood systems are? Hood systems, ventilation, they take all the, they broke on opening night. Yeah. So it was like, you guys want to ask like, what's one of the most embarrassing things that's ever happened to you as a chef? When people are like running out of the doors of your restaurant because it's (laughs) full of smoke and there's a giant fire behind you because the bags of charcoal underneath the embers from the grill drop into the bags of charcoal and all the charcoal went up in fire too. Yeah, Brian and I did that. It's called burning down the house. We, (laughs) that's really embarrassing. But one thing is we never told MGM that that happens. So, um, they know now. (laughs) It was contained once we used the fire extinguisher. Okay, okay, so um, stop looking at yourselves in the mirror real quick and look in this pan. See these beautiful Hen of the Woods mushrooms are roasted nice and brown. I added some brown butter um, at the Smoky. end. The garlic is not roasted. Not the first time, the time. you've heard that this weekend, huh? Yeah, no. Not the first time in Aspen. I can tell you that right now. So Mom would be so we'll disappointed. Reduce. I know she would be. Can we just stop? All right, so we're going to plate the cereal. And, and just imagine that we're actually cooking for four of you out here on stage with, uh, with a table. We're not allowed to serve this. This would be one of your side dishes. We are not allowed to serve this. But we can put it on the stage and somebody can come up and steal it if they want. Yeah. So, yeah, if somebody came up and stole this dish, what they would be looking at is our Mumami cereal. Let me make sure it's okay uh, first. It's almost ready to be stolen. Just a little, chef. Just. Oh, I thought it was good, chef. Okay. Did so I eat off of this spoon or this spoon? This spoon. That's for the thief. You should get close in on that. That looks pretty good. Yeah. So this froth going around. What this is is some of that mushroom stock, a little bit more butter, and we take yeast and roast it in that butter Whoa. and emulsify it all together. Um, we have that chive. Chive? Chef. Yes, chef. Sorry, sir. My job was to cut chives. Uh, chives. Busy, busy chives. Talking. Oh, thank you. I think I have better ones. Okay, I'll use these. I got it, chef. You got it? Okay, I don't so want you to get while, mad he's, at me. while he's finishing with the chive, I can actually play two of these. Well, let me watch. What are you plating? I can play two. I can steal mushroom from one. That way we can actually break rules twice. Two thieves. Yeah, but that means I have to shave more chives. Yeah, no. It gives you something to do. Shaving chives is like the best thing ever. It's like this for me every day is one of the things I still do in the kitchen at work. Yes, we still go to work in our restaurants, in our kitchens, and prep and cook food for the customers that come into that. That's important to us. So uh, proof of that is that I can still shave chives. If you look, I can look at you, still shave my chives, and not cut my fingertips off. So it's like therapy, though. What was the movie? There was a movie. It was like an old movie, Uh, The Big Night Out or That Big Night or something like that. Anyone see that movie? Start yelling at him about shaving the chives because they had to be like a snowflake. Time? We have to make dessert. 12 minutes. Okay. We have to hurry up. We will. There's your chives. Thank you, chef. Can we serve steak, chives, dessert, and asparagus at the same time? Is that only so, one side dish so, so far? So if we were putting this at the table, we'd present it, and then we'd put a spoon inside, and then people would steal it. Um, you know, don't. Yes. Security. Oh, there he is. You guys don't have your own bodyguard, but we do. Uh, three spoons. Yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Here, you can have as many as you'd like. Steal them. We're not giving these to you. You're taking them. Glad no one else on stage. 
I can't, how many people are in here? A lot. You just let two people walk up and take your oatmeal. Man. All right. What are you doing now? I put your meat on the grill. Thank you. I'm getting What's tired. What's good asparagus? You're getting tired? Yeah. Altitude. Okay. Uh, we have asparagus. We have one more side dish. We have a couple steaks. Why don't you start And dessert? if you let us, we're going to make dessert for you too. Well, for you to look at. Some of you will eat it. Most of you will look at it. I know. Ready? Yes. Are you guys finding this useful? Or like, wow, Voltage has just stood up on stage and rambled on a bunch, a bunch of nonsense steakhouse stuff and we just had to sit there and watch them cook food. But we did do that and we'll do that in 45 minutes, show you an entire experience in a restaurant. So I think that's pretty kind of cool. No, not really cool. A little bit cool. Thank you. It's him, isn't it? You guys are... See? What are you making? Spinach. What kind of spinach? Cream spinach. What would you do to it so far? So what we do in the restaurant is we actually take all of our spinach and um, a really large uh, sautoir, um, and then we add uh, butter, some shallots, we let that brown, and then we add our spinach, and then we quickly saute the spinach. And this is called mise en place, you know, having everything in its place. So our cooks have this on the station ready to go, so that way when we heat up our cream spinach, um, as you'll see, we're taking perfectly seasoned spinach, ready to go. We're just going to warm it up, and then we're going to show you how we put our version of cream spinach together, which is very different uh, than the typical steakhouse presentation. So I'll let you... Garlic? That's garlic. Shallots. Shallots. Okay. So we're Sometimes mix those two things up. That's another good little crispy condiment thing you can make at home. Uh, if you take garlic or shallots... Brunoise, cut it in really tiny dice. You don't have to speak French. Cooking's easy. Chop it really small. Uh, once it's really small, you don't want to chop it like this so you push all the water out of it because the technique I'm going to tell you um, only works if it's pretty dry. So I don't recommend just throwing it into a big food processor and running it. But if you want to food process it, then give it a quick chop first, then food process it. But you want to get it minced. Once it's minced, put it into a pot. Just cover it in cold oil, like canola oil, uh, whatever vegetable oil you like to fry in at home. Cover it with about two times the amount of oil to garlic or shallot. Put it on low heat, and then just watch it and keep slowly watching it and stirring it and stirring it. And it's just going to get brown and brown and brown and brown. And two things happen. One, you get this crispy garnish, but you also get this amazing infused oil. So if you take that and strain it through a now chinois or a mesh uh, strainer, you get that oil that you can use to season things with, dressings, make salad dressings, put it on the meat or spinach that you're working with, um, but then you get these crispy garlic and shallots as a little condiment to, that was a long story about garlic and shallots, but I think it was worth it. What was that? Thank you. Thank you one person that clapped for me. Brian's grilling asparagus. Are you, do you think you can pick up this entire thing by yourself? So I can uh, make yeah, dessert? I might be able to. They're going to tell us to stop talking in seven minutes. They're probably going to tell me to stop talking in like two minutes. So you need to get dessert done. Okay, I'll work on that. Asparagus is here. You have a lemon vinaigrette right here. Chef. I feel like you're, you know, you're like in your, your, the zone over here. I'm like in my zone, Like yes. you're not in a room full of people right now. You're just <laughs> cutting meat. Tell us what you're doing, chef. So um, on our platter here, we have uh, one of the ribeyes that could have been charred a little bit on the outside, but, you know, Sabotage uh, Ming came up and turned down my stove. But it's poor cook who blames Singh, though, I guess. I don't know. So what... Um, Ming, not saying. So as you can see, though, the, the texture and temperature of the meat is, um, is nicely cooked. It's, it's uh, medium rare to medium. I, I believe it's, uh, you know, Can I interrupt you for a second? Rest. Yes, go ahead. Where's the pastry bag that we took from the... It's down there on the end. Sorry, this is a personal moment we're having. The... Yeah, it's filled already with the egg yolk. Oh, oh, you... Sorry, chef. Um, Just... I would love to let you try this, but I don't know if it's going to be, you know, be allowed, but it definitely smells great. Uh, seasoned well. You know what, let's finish all this together and then make dessert together. 
How's that sound? That sounds We're great. running out of time. They're getting bored. You're getting bored. I'm having a blast, so thank you guys for that. Yeah, hey, both of you. Thank you. Okay, so what do I do with this one? Chris Constantino would love to have some steak, right? Where's our steak sauce? Chris is trade. He's a chef. Yeah, he can, he can get no, up there. No, but we made steak sauce, could, chef. We did make steak sauce. Hang on. He made steak sauce. We have it. Is this a vegetarian option? This is not. So we're, we're going to do a little platter with steak and uh, some steak sauce. If we I can made get our a, own if I sauce. Get another, uh, container. We made our own steak. This is like a, is it, it's kind of funny, I think. It's no? It's like Laurel we're Park. brothers, it works. Brothers. We're related. No, you notice I'm cooking too when I'm talking. Where's the cheese? Is this charged? Uh, it is charged. Yeah, we'll put it right on the platter there. There we go. There's some hungry ladies in the back. Take care of them. This oh, is cheese sauce. Wow. Wait, how about, how about? in the back. Who hasn't had breakfast yet? Where is she? Oh, I see her. Oh, and there's a, yes. Can we go there? Of course we are. Okay, we'll go there. But then also, please, we'll serve, serve my wife first, and then we'll share with our friends. Chris, can you guys sing the steak song while he serves the steak, and he has to dance? It goes like this. Chris, you got to do it. Steak, steak, steak. Do it. Help me. Steak, steak, steak. Steak your booty. Come on, Chris. Steak your booty. Steak, steak, steak. Steak, steak, steak. Steak. You guys are so quiet. The wine tent not open yet or what? What's going on around here? Oh, this is the food part of the food and wine this festival. This is just the food part, Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Are these ready? We have to make dessert. Five minutes. I have five minutes to make dessert. We got five. We have time. Are you sure? Absolutely. I better, I feel like I need to start thinking about what I'm going to make for dessert, though. Chris, you don't have a microphone on. Because it's my demo. Can we get Chris a mic? Do you have a mic? No. No? Then he's not getting one. Chris. Oh, is your name Chris too? Yeah. Chris. Wow. Chris. I'll call you chef and I'll call him Chris. How's that sound? Perfect. Okay. So uh, we're about ready to finish the cream of spinach. What, uh, what Michael and I really like about this is that, you know, we took something that, you know, is, is normally... It's a very classic traditional side dish in a steakhouse, but typically you have this really, you know, like homogenous thing where it's the cream and Are the cheese seasoned? and the, they're, they're seasoned. Yes, chef. Sorry, I don't mean to keep interrupting you. Yes. And, um, <laughs> okay. Are you going to let we, us make dessert if we run out, of, run out of time in five minutes? Yeah. But what we it involves really, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, so you have to stay and watch. Can we get the plastic spoons, please? Yes. Yeah. So what we really like about this version of cream spinach before you get into dessert. Where's the shallots? It's the fact that we separated the cream and the spinach because I we really like the texture of uh, the spinach itself. So then as you're eating this cream spinach with this really They're fighting over food right now. That's cheese, what's is there, Are they starting a brawl back there? Yeah. Then, you're um, starting, this is why you're not supposed to serve food at these things because they stop listening. <laughs> Meanwhile, he just made... Who can explain to me what he just did? Cream she gets the cream spinach. You get a cream spinach? Okay. But we use a, a powder called sodium citrate to emulsify the cheese The cheese into the milk. So unlike a traditional uh, uh, bechamel, we use this sodium, and again, yes. the internet, you can buy yeah. anything. Sure. Um, it holds the cheese and the cream together, which then makes this beautiful cloud on top. So now we've shown you snow and clouds in Aspen. This is, uh, where are you going? No, no, we're not finished. You can't eat yet. We're not. Oh, okay. I was hungry. We have to make dessert, too. What kind of cheese? What kind of cheese? It's aged cheddar. So it's aged white cheddar. Fiscalini aged cheddar cheese. These, look at these tongs. I haven't used tongs like this. In, we all use tweezers now. It's like, like we're doctors or something, but these are tongs. These are... This feels so homey. Homey. All right, that's grilled asparagus. That's a lemon vinaigrette. You guys can figure out how to make that. You don't need us to show you. If you do, the recipe's um, online. I mean, 
This is the uh, advanced class. Gail and Andrew are teaching the beginners classes inside, so you guys signed up for the... I'm kidding. Uh, this is egg yolk emulsion. So we took egg yolks. It's very simple. We cooked them at a low temperature until they were super soft. Uh, how could you do this at home without having all the fancy tools and equipment that we have? Come to our restaurant. Basically, yeah, exactly. we cooked it. We vacuum packed the yolks. We cooked them in a, in a combi oven or a steam oven or a circulator bath or whatever you want to use for an hour and a half at 67 degrees Celsius. Then we blended it with olive oil. And then you end up with basically pudding made out of egg yolk. And we're placing some uh, shaved raw asparagus over the top. You so some fancy. Contrast. Look at you. And then these are uh, just whole asparagus that's raw also and just shaved into little coins. Who else is in the back row? We know people here. Mr. Sadowski, come to the stage, please. All right, I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm going to anyway. Jonathan. One of my best friends just won an episode of Chopped, so we need to recognize him. However, it was Celebrity Chopped, so it doesn't count. Jonathan is a star of a TV show called Young and Hungry. Yeah. Now they'll clap. What am I doing? You're going to eat asparagus or go serve it to somebody because we have to make dessert because we're over time. John's also our personal masseuse in the family. Jonathan, see if you can make some friends out there. Who likes asparagus? Who trained you to get ready for Chopped? All right. Who, you won't admit it. What's that? Chef, who helped get you? See how I called you Chef, Chef? What did the box say on the outside of it? Is there a paddle for this? Paddle? All right. We need a paddle for a KitchenAid. Paddle? Uh oh. Do we get nitrogen more? Yes, I got one. Does anyone have any liquid nitrogen on them? We have to make dessert. No? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Couple things that I might need here. Some inspiration. No, I'm just kidding. This ladle. Some liquid nitrogen. The chocolate base. Brian? Yeah, it's right here. You're, you're embarrassing me right now. You're making me look like I don't know what I'm doing. Oh. I know. I purposely sabotage you. <laughs> All right. Does anyone like cereal? Does anyone like Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Does anyone really like Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Well, we uh, made this ice cream. Well, Brian's going to make ice cream. I need to wipe that off. I made a mess. This is, you know, they can see this. This high altitude cooking makes me shake. Sorry. We there sang we that song for this. That was the steak song, not shake song. Uh, after Brian cleans up his mess. There we go. Okay. <laughs> you guys don't like eggs? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jonathan. All right. Um, where do you I bought the house literally, I know that word's misused a lot, literally next door to his. And one month before I moved into it, he bought a house literally in the neighborhood that I moved out of. Great guy, right? Thanks, Jonathan. Love you, buddy. All right. So, no, I need where do we need first. ice cream first, Chef? Yes. This is a Hopefully basic vanilla that. ice cream base. We roasted some uh, cinnamon toast crunch in the oven. We steeped it into the cream and milk overnight. Then we strained it out. So basically, equal parts hey, by volume, this. we put cereal. Hey, watch this. Watch. They saw Richard Bay do that already. Nitro Bay. Look. I need some of that. No, no, not yet. All right. I thought it was going to be cool. 
So we steep the milk and cream with oh, cereal. Shit, just got my shoe. Are you guys? He's okay. Are we back? We're back to ice cream. Okay. Roast the cereal in the oven until it gets nice and golden brown. Malt it almost, like you're malting barley or something like that. Take that cereal, put it into your base of milk or cream. Does anyone make ice cream at home, have an ice cream maker? Okay, so follow whatever recipe you follow, but before the part where you add eggs or anything to it, you're just marinating the cereal inside the liquid, right? Strain that out the next morning, take that liquid, turn that into ice cream, that's what this is. But then we went a step further with it. We made some granola also. So this is Cinnamon Toast Crunch Granola. Oh, that's a Duskin pack. Sorry. We'll call it Cinnamon Toast Granola so we don't get sued. I Instagrammed something yesterday because this actually happened. I called something Doritos on my menu. Guess who has a better lawyer than me? <laughs> Guess who now writes four Ritos on his menu? <laughs> Guess who got the same letter for our bay? That didn't work Our bay. Oh, yeah, like old bay? bay? Well, because it's not their bay. It's true. It's right? the Chesapeake's bay, Damn honestly. Right it is. So Adam made a spice blend and it was called Our Bay. It was our version of Old Bay. I guess they didn't like that. I spilled more stuff on your thing here. Um, this thing that I'm going to do only works half the time. So either I'll get a round of applause or I'll just be a complete disappointment for all of you. Either way. We got ice cream rocks here. I still got to be on stage at Food Wine Classic in Aspen. That's pretty cool. What's going on here? I need a offset spatula. I guess I can use this. I was just trying not to be dangerous. Okay. So okay. Brian made this, uh, these like ice cream rocks. This is kind of, if you go up there high enough in the mountain and start to fall down the side of it, you might end up in a pile of something that looks like that. So, right? Yeah, rocks and exactly. Rocks and dirt and blueberries. Is that cold? Yeah. It's so pretty. This is nerve wracking. I'm over time and I don't know if this is gonna work. Please work, please work, please work. It's gonna be super awkward. Oh no, it's not working. Oh yeah, it did. So, some people make a hot fudge sundae. We make a cold fudge Sunday. Thank you, Aspen. Thank you, Food and Wine. Thank you, everyone.